Welcome to the Tipping Point Show. I'm Jimmy Evans. It is my great pleasure to have joining me again today on the show, my good friend, Rabbi Jonathan Kahn. He's the author of many New York Times bestselling books. He leads Hope of the World Ministry, an international outreach of teaching, evangelism, and compassion projects for the world's most needy. He also leads Jerusalem Center, Beth Israel, a worship center uh, just outside of New York City in Wayne, New Jersey. He is the most amazing prophetic voice of our generation. He's with me today to talk about his new book, The Josiah Manifesto. And you are, Rabbi Khan, the most amazing oh. prophetic voice of this generation. Oh, thank you. There's thank no you doubt about it. I'm, I'm serious. Yeah, it's just we're, we're friends. Mm. And I tell you that a lot, but I'm telling you, it, I don't. And there are a lot of great teachers out there and mm. people, you know, who uh, teach the word and do a great job. And but I have never met a person that has the level of revelation that you do. And it, you know, and it's, it's not some kind of esoteric revelation, it's just out there. Mm -hmm. You know, you're taking real world events and tracing them mm -hmm. back to the Bible and the hand of God. Mm -hmm. And so for those, for anyway, thank you for joining me today. Oh, my best. Before I start rambling here. No. But um, for those that didn't see last show, because mm -hmm. you were with me on the last podcast, Kind of give a, uh, yeah. a, a background on it. Yeah, yeah. There's, for those that don't, the Josiah Manifesto is, is I, I put it this way, imagine if God was giving us a revelation of the prophetic moment we're at, the prophetic moment we're going to, where things are heading, and what we need to do about it. And not just, because I, that's a little different, how to prepare for it, how to stand, and not just now, in the last days, because right. it all goes together, um, how to overcome. And and what if what we've been dealing with witnessing in, in our lives, we've all been affected by it, is actually part of this ancient mystery, which is an exact mystery. The hand of God, the, the God of the Bible, is actually totally active, not only alive, well, active, involved in what's been happening, touching everybody, believer and non-believer, touching the world, touching America. Um, what if there's a calendar, I will get into it today, which actually gives the, 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 what's the shakings of America, but also the timing of it, when things are going to happen. Um, and what if, what does this have to do with each of us? And so that is what the Josiah Manifesto opens up. Um, and the, and the, the last part of it, you know, the last hundred pages are the actual manifesto, which is what, where does this all point for us to do and, and you know, practically and, and to stand and that. So last time we, we just, I'll just get up and say, we spoke about the mystery behind the, this COVID, this plague to right. the exact things. We, we spoke about the mystery of Donald Trump and January 6th and the political realm. And we spoke about what happened at the end of this, which is the overturning of Roe versus Wade and what the, how that even goes with Leviticus and all these, yeah. these things from the Bible. So that, that, that was just an idea of what we just did. It, it's, it's really mind blowing. I want to say, <clears throat> if you didn't uh, listen to the last or watch the last episode of The Tipping Point, you need to go back and listen to it. Uh, either on YouTube or if you're a subscriber, an endtimes.com subscriber. This is an amazing book. And, and I said on the last show, and I want to say it again, if you have unbelieving or skeptical friends or family members or something like that, challenge them and just say, read, read this book, you know, or listen to these podcasts. And, but, but they need to read the book because I'm telling you, it is undeniable, the hand of God and all of these things that the rabbi is talking about. Now, you write that there were events that shook America that actually foretold and appointed by the ancient calendar. What are those? Yeah, and, and, and you know, we were talking about Leviticus 25 for the Jubilee. Now, now there's another one, Leviticus 23, which gives the all the appointed days of God, as you right. know. And so this is the calendar of Israel. This is what these, but these are God's days. Right. You know, we're, we're right now, as we're doing this, we're in, in this, this period of that. So the, the entire calendar go, is marked out by God. And in Hebrew, as you know, I'm sure they're called the Moadim or the appointed days of God. So they're appointed. There's something about them. And things happen on those days. I mean, you know, and when you look at our faith in the New Testament, all the great events happen according That's to exactly that. Right. The, the crucifixion to Passover, you know, Pentecost, you know, the spirit to Shavuot, Pentecost. So here's the, here's the thing. When in that, when everything, when America was being shaken by all these things and it looked like everything's out of control, Actually, there's a mystery here that what got the blueprint of God here actually ordained or gave the revelation of what was happening, what was going to happen, and when it would happen. I'll, I'll give you an example of the, of the first one. There's only one appointed day from God that has to do with a plague, and that is Passover. It has to do with a plague, right. you know. And I mean, when it, the very name, Passover, plague, you know, the plague passes over. So, so the amazing thing, when does it happen? It happens in March, April of every year. So when you go to that year, March, April, the time of Passover, all the, that's the time when everything falls on America, falls on the world, falls on America particularly. And the thing is that, and that's when this plague falls upon right. the nation right. as well. And the thing is that, but it's not only that, 
Passover is also, if you think about it, it's the very first national lockdown in world history. That's exactly you know, right. that when God says, go into your house, stay inside your house. Why? Because a plague is passing through the land. Same reason. So, so when this hits, when, when Passover comes on the appointed calendar, we're all, we're at the height of the, we've locked down the plague passing through. And Jewish people are, are think about this, all over America and the world, they're in their homes and they're celebrating Passover where they're commemorating how God had them stay in their houses because a plague was passing through the land while they're in their houses and a plague is passing through the land. I mean, who could do that? That's and, amazing. Yeah. yeah, and when you look at, and Israel, by the way, Netanyahu, is, at that time, Israel gave a, a command to the entire nation, there's a curfew today, it happened to be Passover. You have to stay in your house until morning and because of, because of a plague. I mean, that has not happened for 3,000 years. No. Yeah. And, the, and the other thing about it is that, I mean, in kind of a larger scale, is you think about America and the West and much of the world, that they, much ha the culture has turned away from Jesus, turned away. Jesus is the Passover lamb. He is the Passover. Our faith is a Passover faith. It begins right. on Passover and the cruise. So the thing is that it's almost like here, you're, you're going away, you're kind of pushing God out, you're pushing out the lamb. And yet now you're being brought right back into the mystery of Passover where, where there's a plague coming and you need the lamb. You know, so it's amazing. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. yeah. OK, so what about the, the, the summer break yeah. during all the COVID? There was all the craziness happening, the race riots and yeah. all the, the yeah. rage. What, what, what does that have to do with COVID? Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, that's the next shaking. Like, remember, it was, it was like crazy because we, we're all dealing with COVID at the same. We're all like, and then comes the, the next right. shaking. The, the next appointed day, Moadi, and the next one is called is Shavuot, known as Pentecost in Greek. Now, what is that about? Well, we know, but Pentecost is about, I mean, there's two things here. One is, as far as Pentecost, is that, of course, the Spirit of God. Um, Jesus breathed, it says he breathed on them and said, receive the Spirit. There's a reason, because in Hebrew, the word for Spirit, Ruach, also means breath. Right. And, and in Greek, the Spirit, the, the, for Spirit, Pneuma, also means breath. So it's the breath of God. So you got breath, that's one thing. Interesting thing, because we talked about, I mentioned that, we watched our culture reject the lamb. We're also watching our culture reject the spirit in the same time. And That's as you exactly do that, you're rejecting right. the spirit. Yeah. You're rejecting the breath of God. So this shaking is gonna begin, it's gonna be focused on breath. So it begins when a man in Minneapolis, uh, George Floyd says, I can't breathe. I can't breathe. Oh my gosh. And that, that can't breathe, no breath is gonna erupt the, one of the greatest shakings this nation has ever seen. Yeah. And when all the cities, all, when it happens, they're going to be chanting all over America. The, the chant was, I can't breathe. Right. Oh I can't God. breathe. Here's a nation oh that, that can't, doesn't have the breath of God. I mean, as its culture. And now, so that's one thing. Second, what is Pentecost? It is linked to, it is, it is the Holy Spirit of fire, tongues of fire, you know, uh, the baptism of fire, um, you know, the, the, the spirit is the fire of God. It's all about the days of fire lit up. What happens as the day actual comes, as the, the appointed day comes, America is baptized in fire. The judgment in the form of if fires come all over our cities are on fire. In fact, the very night when it came and Jewish people are lighting fire, they're lighting the candles, igniting that, that was May 28th. That was the very day that it all exploded wow. over America when it passed Minneapolis, explodes to the cities on fire. That was the day, remember, when the police station went up in fire? Oh, yeah. Uh, everything, that was the day of the fire, of, the, of the God's day of fire. And, and it went right into, it was Thursday, it went right, the Hebrew day went right into the Christian form of it, which is Pentecost Sunday. When, Pente when Christians are celebrating the fire of, of the Holy Spirit, the land is on fire. So that's the second shaking and the second appointed day. That is amazing. What, what is the day of the Most High Court and what happened on that day? Well, we've just been, we've just, we just kind of, you and I in the, in the conference celebrated it together. It, it's the Feast of Trumpets uh, oh. because, because yeah. you have the summer, you know, and actually it's interesting because Pentecost actually ushers in the summer harvest. And so right. this one, this was one of high fire and shaking ushered in a summer of fire and shaking. Yeah. You know? So now at the end of the summer comes the day of the trumpets. You know, now that Feast of Trumpets, it, it's called Rosh Hashanah. It's not really the Jewish New Year. It's the day of the trumpets. And it's actually in Hebrew is called Yom Hadin, which means the day of judgment. And the reason is, and you know, Jimmy, but many people don't know, that that day is linked to judgment, that Jewish people are all looking to the court of God. They're looking because they believe that God uh, that he passes the judgment on what is coming in the future. So he passes the judgment in the books, and then and then you got 10 days to get right with God. Right. So it's the day that it all talks about the heavenly court, the high court, all that. So it's all about a court. 
Well, amazing thing is, as that day comes now, the theme of the court, all of a sudden, as Jewish eyes turn to the court of God, the, the nation, America, is forced to turn to the high court of America because something God, God touches that court or, that, or the hand of God allows something to happen. It says that, it, the Jewish people say that he determines who passes from the earth. On the, on the day of the Feast of Trumpets, that was Friday, September 18th, the Supreme Court justice passes from the earth, from oh, the court. That was Ruth Ginsburg. And, that, and so all, I, in fact, they announced it, you know, this begins at sundown, you know, and it talks about the judgment. But um, so on sundown, it's a, it goes forth from the Supreme Court, they announce it. All eyes turn to the court as Jewish eyes are turning to the court of God. Now, one of the things it says about, one of the things about this is, you know, God is saying, listen, you have your high court, but I, I have my high court. You know, you are, you are the judges here. I am the true judge and I, you have your verdicts and I can overturn your verdicts. It was the Supreme Court that passed Roe versus Wade. Wow. And so it was God who now, now God is going to set in motion the overturning of Roe versus Wade on the day of God as judge and his verdict. He's going to overturn the verdict of man because it was that very, the very event with Ruth Ginsburg passing is the very event that opened the door for the overturning of Roe versus Wade. Yes, it was. If that didn't happen, and it happens on the end, and, and as you know, Jimmy, the that day of trumpets is also, is the day that ushers in the days of Teshuvah. We're in it right now when we record, but the days of repentance. So you're supposed to turn from your evil. So this day is gonna usher in America turning from the evil of Roe versus Wade, and it's gonna, it's actually the Supreme Court is gonna turn from its own evil by undoing it. It's gonna start on that day. And the thing is that there's actually, Amazing. there's actually another ancient prayer that is prayed on that day. And, and that is also, it says, God, you know, through our prayers and through our repentance, Lord, Lord, reverse the evil of the decree, reverse. And so it all begins, all begins on that day. So what is the day of turning? Okay, this one, again, and this is the only book where I, I, I'm in it because I witnessed some things and some, and this is the, the second time thing I witnessed. During this time, um, I and um, some other people, a great man of God named Kevin Jessup, um, you may know, um, and we're, we've been let, we're left for some time that there has to be a day of prayer and repentance in America. So we, so we, we call for a day uh, called the Return, the National Day of Prayer and Repentance. And we met on the National Mall, tens of thousands of believers, and it was all over, the day started, it was all over, yeah. people were joining in. And the point was, it was Joel 2, and that was to, re that was to repent, it says, where he says, gather together, blow the shofar, and repent and cry out that I will lift the curse on the, on the land. And so that was the scripture, that was the thing. Now we didn't realize, Jimmy, when we did it, because actually this was, the date was chosen two years before, but it ended up being in the midst of everything, you know. And it ended up being that day, there, it turns out on the Jewish calendar, there was a day called Shabbat Shuvah. Shabbat Shuvah. That, it turned out that was the day we, it was on. We didn't know it. We didn't plan it that way. But it ended up, the return was on the day of Shabbat Shuvah. Shabbat Shuvah literally means the day of the return. Wow. <laughs> so, so we were, so we wow. had the day of the return on the day of the return without knowing what we were doing. You know, God, you, know, you don't have to know what you're doing, Jimmy. Yep. Yeah, we just have to know the one, the one who's doing it. <laughs> you know? right. So, so, so we're there. So, so we're gathered there and it's all repentance and praying. And actually I was led that, I was led to take a potter's jar. We talked about Jeremiah mm -hmm. and, and smash it there because, and because one of the main things we were praying for the blood of the children, we're praying for the overturn, literally. And so we're praying there. Now we're praying that at the same time, the president, you know, President Trump, he has to choose, he has a very small window if he's going to appoint anybody to the Supreme Court because very in 40 days is an election and it becomes lame duck yeah. for him. So, so he had very short, so he chooses the day to nominate the Supreme Court justice, which is going to be the vote that overturns Roe versus Wade. That's good. It's one vote. That's going to, it's the last one. That's the vote. He chooses to do it on the, that same day, which is the day of the turning of a nation. Oh my God. It's a day for a turn. Shuvah means turning, as sh return and turning. So on the day of turning, he sets in motion the turning from America from its sin, which are the day of God. You know? And the thing is, I'm gonna throw something in, 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 in the midst of it. So, 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 so we're praying for that on the mall. He's at the White House and doing, and it's beginning. And the thing is, one thing about that, there is, there's a, one part of the book is called Child of the Nile. And that is that, that remember, the, the first kind of war against children that we know of is what Egypt did when, right. it, when it threw the, the Hebrew yeah. babies into the Nile. 
And but there's one Hebrew baby who goes to the Nile who survives the slaughter and ends up as Moshe Moses. He rises up to be the one who's going to break the power that tried to kill them. Maybe he's going to break the power. And when you, I mean, it's interesting because when you look at the plagues, that first plague, what is it? It's the Nile turning to blood. That's right. where they threw the babies. What's the last plague? It's the death of the Egyptian sons when they killed the Hebrew sons. So, so Moses is the one. So I call him the child of the Nile. Does America, could America have a child of the Nile? A child born amidst the slaughter who's going to rise up, who's going to undo it? Well, it does. And that was Amy Barrett. She is born right in that critical period of the, of the three-year period when abortion comes in. She's born when it goes to the Supreme Court. She actually is born right in between the two hearings of Roe versus Wade in the court. She's going to grow up to go to that same court. Wow. She's the first. She's the first Supreme Court justice who was born when it was legal to kill her as a baby. Wow. And so, so she's going to be used. And interesting, and the one, and it's not, listen, it's not about the people when I say Ruth Ginsburg and that, but Ruth Ginsburg was very much for abortion. And she and she actually she actually tried to do a case at the time of Roe versus Wade that, that she thought would overturn abortion too. So, but what her, because what happened on the Feast of Trumpets, wow. that case, the, it's removed. And then eight days later comes the day of the turning. And then on that day, there, Ruth, uh, the, now Amy Barrett is going to be brought to the White House on that day of the turning, and 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 Trump is going to be at his at side, the, the American Jay, who's going to pull down <laughs> the Devil of Baal with this one. When she gets in, she's going to get into the court in the uh, the year of abortions jubilee. She's going to wow. get in the court, and she's going to over, she's going to cast her vote to over. It's going to be the deciding vote, and in the year that's. Her, the jubilee of her life. Oh my! The gosh. one who was born under the. I mean, you know, you can't. So, so it all, it all kind of converges. It all converged on that day of the turning. We had no, and we didn't know this. We don't plan. We don't know. God knows it. And you're going to see. It's going to. There's one last piece of that puzzle that has to do with an instrument of God that uh, that it's even more. Well, I, I just, you know, <clears throat> I just hope that people understand because sometimes you can think, well, God gave up on America. You know, God's God's out there somewhere and America is just, you know, going to hell. And, you know, God's hand is everywhere. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, this that's what this book is talking about is yeah. God's hand is when you when you understand the the power of God and, and the how exacting God is. Fifty years here, because on the last show we talked about yeah. many of the 50 yeah. years the, to the day. So, so what is the instrument that yes. represents God's power? Yeah. Well, this is going to take it one more one more dimension. And again, I, I throw this in several times, but you know, not that I I'm not saying I know anything here, but God knows what He's doing. So here here's what happened. Okay. So it's that day. Okay. This is another Hebrew holy day, day of the turning. Okay. I was led that we had to at five o'clock. I was led I, in that day. We have to seal all these prayers together with one thing. And what I'm, what's on my heart is we got to do it with the shofar because the shofar is the, as you know, sound of God's power. It's right. the sound of the jubilee. It's the sound of Jericho. You know. So, so I said. So I at that time, as it's approaching five o'clock, I said, okay, oh, we're going to seal this all. Men with shofars, you got it. Come on up. So on the stage comes up six men. I didn't know who all who was going to go. Six men come up. They have the talits on. They get the shofars ready. I said, okay, now. I said, I said, when you hear the shot, when you hear when you hear the blast, everybody shout of Jericho at the moment. So I said, now we seal, we seal all these prayers. And I believe we were actually sealing the prayers of 50 years too. I said, we seal all these prayers together. I said, let the power of God go forth. So we're on the, on the National Mall and go forth. I, I said, go. Okay. At that moment, the shofars go. They, the shout goes up. Okay. At the White House, Trump is standing there on the, on the lawn the American Jehu, next to him is this child of the Nile. At the moment, he's, he opens his mouth and sets in motion the overturning of abortion at that moment. Now, the thing is, the thing is, when we looked at the videotape, okay, we looked at both videos, this is a joke about God, you know, videotapes, the, I said the word, the go, and they went, they blasted at, on the five o'clock, four minutes, we were late, four minutes, and the 33rd second. Trump opens his mouth, begins the overturning of abortion, five o'clock, four minutes, and the 33rd oh, second. Oh, gosh. To the exact oh, second. Oh, my gosh. The exact second. And, and, and so at the same moment, and the thing is, and Jimmy, Isn't that the, amazing? The, the, the thing is, the thing is, that's what you, I mean, you just set that up and say, listen, this is the hand of God. God shows it. So the overturning of a, abortion was begun with the sound of God's power of our God yeah. in the Bible, the sound of Jericho, you know, at the exact moment. And the thing, this is the thing, 
Trump, not only did he choose Saturday, he chose five o'clock to do it. We chose five o'clock to do it, but we ran late. You know, we had like, we had, I don't know what there was, 150 people just coming. And if anybody was one second too long or one second, or they didn't go too long, it didn't matter. <laughs> we wouldn't have gone. And if Trump wasn't late for his thing, so this is this is how That's God amazing. is in, every, in everything. So at the one moment, it all converges. The American Jehu, the, 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 it was the year of Jubilee of abortion. It's the year that you sound the trumpet. And so the trumpet sound, we, I'm not thinking all this. It's just a, the trumpet sound. It's the day of the turning. It's all that, you know, and here's the other thing here, and this is maybe the sense of humor of God, is I'm saying, God, you said, I mean, it's like I'm blown away, but I said, you know what? When, before I found that out, I said, you know, I called up men. I don't know how many they're going to, there were six. I said, that'd be nice to have, yeah, seven, you know, you know, seven trumpets, Jericho, you know, Revelation. So I said, but then it hit me. I said, wait a minute. It's like, there was the seventh trumpet. What does the name of our president mean? Trump? <laughs> it means the trumpet. And so I said, go for the trumpets to sound. At the same second, Trump sounded. Oh my God. He was the seventh trumpet. God is amazing. Thanks for watching. If you aren't a subscriber to this channel, subscribe today and share with anyone who you think needs to hear this conversation. To see the full episode, head to endtimes.com where we post weekly shows and articles from people like myself, Dr. Mark Hitchcock, and many more.